Good day, fellow investor. Now let's discuss a controversial topic. Can you beat the market? I am convinced that we can beat the market and that it is actually easy, despite 95% of the rest of the world thinking the opposite. Let's discuss. And I firmly believe 95% of the world lives in a lie. And the biggest lie that everybody else tells you is that you can't beat the market. And actually, it's not about beating the market. The market is so irrelevant to real investors that you should not even compare yourself to the market. But Sven, let's start with the statistics that are totally the opposite to what you say. If we look at the statistics from Spiva, over 20 years, the percentage of funds that outperform the benchmarks all US funds is 4.7%. So just 4.7% did beat the market. Everybody else, no, didn't beat the market. And especially small cap funds, everyone, just 1% did beat the market. So that is really, really crazy statistics. If we look at bonds, even in bonds, especially when it goes away from the simple, easy government funds that should be 50-50 or should be equal. So as soon as it comes to something, nobody beats the market, which is really, really remarkable. And then plus also many funds start their life and close usually over six to seven years. That's the average life of a fund because it's simply very, very difficult to play this game. So 70% of the funds close, no, not even survive, to 20 years that are measured here. So you cannot even compare. So only the 30%, 5% of the 30% survive to have a comparable measure. And then also if we look at retail investors, the market simply destroys them because they do the wrong thing at the wrong moment in time, trying to beat the market. So Sven, again, you have the data here. Why the hell do you think that you can beat the market? What makes the difference? Let's discuss. So first there is the market, the S&P 500, but there are also other markets. This is the Dutch stock market. So over the last 22 years, the Dutch stock market did practically nothing, nothing. So this can happen to every market, especially at high levels, at high prices. So one market, is yes, the S&P 500, but there are many markets. My investment journey started on the Zagreb Stock Exchange in Croatia, and I started investing here, and if I just invested in the market, I would be at double my money over 20 years. That's about it. Of course, there were ups and there were downs, but it didn't do much. So I think that you can easily beat many markets. That's also already a start. Then we have the Dow Jones here. And if you look at inflation adjusted returns, you can see that it's very often that the market doesn't do anything. So 1966 to 1996, let's say 30 years, no real returns. 1929 to 1959, no real returns, 2000 to 2013, no real returns. And when this bubble reverts, I'm not saying anything. But let's cut the inflation here. And yes, from 1965, stocks didn't do anything to 1982. Let me give you a piece of information here. Value stocks, the lowest 20% of price earnings ratio, ratios from here to here, went up a thousand percent. So that's why I'm saying investing in value, investing smartly does it because here it went up 1000 percent and no matter what the market does next, it cannot catch up for the difference. That's simply investing. And yes, the market will have great times when everybody will think it's impossible to beat the market, but you can just do as the market in great times and then beat it when the market does nothing, and that's all. And who did that? Of course, Warren Buffett. If you look at his performance from 1965, he had relative results only one, two, three years of underperformance in 
value per share compared to the S&P 500 included dividends. That's really, really remarkable. And then he continued later, just one year, and that is the year that the market did really, really well, 1999. If we look at Berkshire here, 1998, 1999, it did terribly till 2000, 40% down. Comparing that to the Nasdaq that really boomed in that period. So everyone was saying Warren Buffett is old, he is losing his touch, he's not anymore the great investor. Well, we all know the result. This happened for the Nasdaq down approximately 75%. Do I have to show you what happened from peak Nasdaq to bottom Nasdaq with Berkshire up 50%? That is investing in value, my friends. But let me tell you a secret here. I really think that the biggest mistake people, investors, fund managers especially do is trying to beat the market. Because when you start focusing on the market, there is where you lose. If you focus on your investments, just doing compounding, then you are winning no matter what the market does. I really couldn't care less what the market does. The focus should be on investing. And when the focus is on investing, compounding, you stop caring about the market and then you do well over time. That's it. Plus, there is a huge difference on what you pay for the market. The market is now at the Schiller price earnings ratio of 32. So cyclically adjusted 10 years of average earnings. And you can see that on that metric, it is at the top expensive levels in history. And you know that when the market is high, the likely return from this point the following 15 years real is 1% per year. If you get 1% per year, you can consider yourself lucky, my friend. So this is what I need to do to beat the market now. 1%. Will we be able to do that? Well, we'll discuss how in the third part of this video, but let's go to something that is a huge missed opportunity if you just don't think and invest in the market. The market is sometimes exuberant, sometimes pessimistic. If you invest when it's exuberant like it is now, you'll likely see bad results. If you invest when pessimistic, you will likely see great results. Avoid the market when exuberant, you will likely also see great results. That's pretty easy. But there is something, and this is from Warren Buffett 1985 letter to investors. It seems hard to believe. However, institutions were under the spell of academics still now who were preaching the newly fashioned theory. The stock market was totally efficient and therefore calculations of business value and even thought itself were of no importance in investment activities. We are enormously indebted to those academics that are still running the field now because what could be more advantageous in an intellectual contest, whether it be bridge, chess or stock selection, than to have opponents who have been taught that thinking is a waste of energy. And then we go to Charlie Munger and his core essence of investing that you miss out if you don't use your brains. You have to think in life. Wow, let's see, whoa. Our experience tends to confirm a long-held notion that being prepared on a few occasions in a lifetime to act promptly in scale in doing some simple and logical thing will often dramatically improve the financial results of that lifetime. So on one side, we have the market, not thinking, just put your money there and forget it. And on the other side, we have the few opportunities in your lifetime that will come to you and you can only take advantage of those if you think. That for me is the, I rest my case. Thinking, I will take the opportunities in life not thinking I will let them pass me by. And he says it here, to act promptly in scale a few times in your life. That's what I did in 2002, 2010, 11, in 2015 with real estate in the Netherlands, and now I'm also doing it with some other opportunities. And if you do that, the market is no benchmark. Plus, we have looked at index funds, those are pricey. Still, no matter the decline, still pricey and will not make you rich. So it's up to you whether you want to think about life, investing and money 
or not. It's totally up to you. Because investing is about owning businesses over your lifetime and getting rewarded from the value those businesses create for other people. It's just businesses. Forget about the stock market. And when you forget about the stock market, you start compounding business value and that's the strength and that is simply unbeatable. And especially as everyone tries to beat the market, nobody focuses on businesses, it gets too easy. The secret is to avoid doing stupid things, avoid crypto, avoid the Teslas, avoid the ARCs, avoid the 3D printing, avoid this, avoid that, and simply avoid high valuations. So stick to good businesses at low or fair prices. That is the low risk, high reward path to wealth accumulation. Because if you buy here, you can immediately see the returns over time. And yes, the market did here, but there is plenty that reverts here and you can take advantage of opportunities if you just think. And now I just got a dividend of 4% of my initial portfolio cost that I started in 2019. And that's a half year dividend will likely be so much more in six months. So that is 8% yield on cost that I can reinvest. And if I look at my portfolio that I started in 2019 with 100,000 euros, today it is 203,000. And this is what I do. And if I look at my positions, I really think that the businesses will compound at 10, 15% per year from current levels, which means that I will likely double this over the next two to five years. That's my goal. It's very likely. And I still have now cash to take advantage of opportunities that come. So I've done this over the last four years, starting in 2019. If I look at the S&P 500, let's give it an advantage. Let's really measure it here. I've done 100%. This is 66%. And I think it's unlikely that the S&P 500 doubles from here over the next three to four years. So that is the advantage of investing and focusing on businesses. I really don't know what to say more. And for me, it has been easy over the last 20 years. I just focus on owning businesses and those businesses compound value. And that's about it. I couldn't care less about the market because if I did that when I started, okay, I started here. If I invested now in the market plus the dividends, I would have five, six times my money, not 40, 30 times my money. And that's, trust me, a huge difference in life. And then again, how to beat the market. Very simple. Here is Buffett's take. Read this. Just search the super investors of Graham and Dodsville PDF. You'll find it on Columbia. And the secret is pretty simple. You're looking for $1 bills that you can pay 40 cents for them. That gives you a margin of safety. You buy only if nothing can crash. So at the price is right. If you pay too much, there is no margin of safety. The bridge will crash. And there is an also examples. This was written in 1984. Walter Schloss destroyed the market till 1984. He obliterated the market from 1984 to 2002 when he retired. So it works. It's just that nobody likes it because it's slow, it's steady, it compounds over time. It avoids the stupid high flying stock. So I will always be the idiot for not investing in Tesla. I will always also be the idiot for not investing in ARK, in Palipatia, in this, in crypto, in that and that. And trust me, if you are always that idiot, you compound over time and at the end, you'll end up rich. Let's see about the others. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to your comments. Subscribe. See you in the next video.